chapter thirty of the inner chamber and the inner life by andrew murray this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by christopher smith psalm one hundred and nineteen and its teaching o oh, how i love thy law it is my meditation all the day consider how i love thy precepts yea i love them exceedingly in holy scripture there is one portion wholly devoted to teaching us the place which god's word ought to have in our esteem and the way we can secure its blessing it is the longest chapter in the bible and with hardly an exception in every one of its one hundred and seventy six verses we have under different names mention made of the word any one who really wants to know how to study his bible according to god's will ought to make a careful study of this psalm there ought to come a time in his life when he resolves to study its teaching and carry it out into practice how can we wonder that our bible study does not bring more spiritual profit and strength if we neglect the divine directory it offers us for that study it is possible you have never read it once through as a whole if you have not time find time some free sabbath hour or why not some free weekday hour in which you read it through and try to take in its chief thought or at least to catch its spirit if you find it difficult to do this by reading it once read it more than once this will make you feel the need of giving it more careful thought the following hints may help you in its study first note all the different names under which god's word is spoken of second note all the different verbs expressing what we ought to feel and do in regard to the word let this lead you to consider carefully what the place is that god's word claims in your heart and life and how every faculty of your being desire love joy trust obedience action is called out by it third count and note how many times the writer speaks in the past tense of his having kept observed stuck to delighted in god's testimonies how many times he expresses in the present tense how he rejoices in loves and esteems god's law and then how in the future tense he promises and vows to observe god's precepts to the end put all these together and see how more than a hundred times he presents his soul before god as one who honours and keeps his law study this especially as these expressions are connected with his prayers to god until you have a clear image of the righteous man whose fervent effectual prayer availeth much fourth study then the prayers themselves and note down the different requests he makes with regard to the word whether for the teaching to understand and the power to observe it or for the blessing promised in the word and to be found in doing it note especially prayers like teach me thy statutes give me understanding also those where the plea is according to thy word fifth count the verses in which there is any allusion to affliction whether from his own state or from his enemies or the sins of the wicked or god delaying to help him and learn how it is in the time of trouble that we need god's word specially and that this alone can bring comfort to us sixth then comes one of the most important things mark how often the little pronoun thou thine thee occurs and how often it is understood in every petition teach thou me quicken thou me and you will see how the whole psalm is a prayer spoken to god all the psalmist has to say about the word of god whether with regard to his own attachment to it or his need of god's teaching and quickening is spoken upwards into the face of god he believes that it is pleasing to god and good for his own soul to connect his meditation and thoughts on the word as continually and as closely as possible by prayer with the living god himself every thought of god's word instead of drawing him off from god leads him to fellowship with god the word of god becomes to him the rich and inexhaustible material for holding communion with the god whose it is and to whom it is meant to lead as we gradually get an insight into these truths we shall get a new meaning from the single verses 
and when from time to time we take a whole paragraph with its eight verses we shall find how they help to lift us up with and through the word into god's presence and into that life of obedience and joy which says i have sworn and will perform it that i will keep thy righteous judgment oh how i love thy law it is my meditation all the day let us seek by the grace of the holy spirit to have the devotional life which this psalm reveals wrought into our morning watch let god's word every day and before everything else lead us to god let every blessing in it be a matter of prayer very specially our need of divine teaching let our intense attachment to it be our childlike plea and confidence that the father will help us let our prayers be followed by the vow that as god quickens and blesses us we shall run the way of his commandments and let all that god's word brings ourselves make us the more earnest in longing to carry that word to others whether for the awakening or the strengthening of the life of god in the soul End of chapter thirty.